I think data remains the oil in the system of, of the cyber criminal economy. So much of it is swept up from so many companies that are still not protecting their holdings of personal data well enough. And in my experience from the law enforcement community, you know, large amounts of stolen personal data dumped on the dark market trading platforms, which are then used by fraudsters in, in, in other areas. And that's sustaining, I think, a growth of, of cybercrime. Alongside that, at the top end of the criminal economy, we're seeing a more aggressive st strain of malware coming through to directly penetrate bank transfer payment systems, for example. So a combination of factors um, in as, as criminals learn how better to um, exploit modern technology, especially. We've seen an increase in the, um, the footprint, I think, of malicious state actors and the way in which they're impacting now on commercial organizations, moving away from their traditional attack vector base of military and government institutions, kind of bleeding out into a wider cyber criminal community of state actor capability, and that's high-end stuff. Uh, some of that is towards generating illicit profits, some of it is towards stealing intellectual property, commercial secrets, some of it is really simply destructive malware, as we've seen in Nonpetia and other major, major incidents. Uh, and I think as we've seen the fusing of state actor and high-end cyber criminal capability, that's certainly driving up uh, this aggressive strain of, of, of malware. And I think that's a real challenge even to you know, the global companies that have the best cybersecurity standards. Most of the cyber incidents that we're seeing, certainly the most significant ones, are effectively an exploitation of third-party vendor supply chains, for example, or the long tail of a, of a distributed manufacturing base for, for many companies. So there are, there's an increasing number of opportunities for criminals uh, to exploit us. And at the same time, they're using more advanced combinations of social engineering and malware. And I think that combination is driving up the scale of the problem, I think. You have to remember there's a major upside, of course, in, in the way in which we have um, introduced greater technologies into our lives and, and the upsides, I think, still far out, outweigh the, the downside. But from my background, I'm sort of dealing more with the darker side of digitalization. And I see how, for example, cyber criminals have very adeptly exploited the availability of cryptocurrencies as a way of modernizing in a te technological age the age-old business criminal business of extortion. They can now extort money, blackmail businessmen, for example, now in an anonymized way because of the availability of cryptocurrencies. It's a, it's a, a powerful example of how technology can reinvent crime, some of it very old-fashioned, in, in, in a much more dangerous way. And, and so I think um, you know, we have to accept that as we promote new technologies and introduce it, there will always be a flip side. And, and that tells me something about the need, I think, for having slightly more mature, responsible cybersecurity standards and culture in our technological development, in the way in which we race towards the digitization of our businesses. In my role at Deloitte, I speak to you know, board members of very many global companies. And you know, I think the single most important is adopting the right mindset. I mean, we start from the business of, of recognizing that this is a serious problem. In many respects, it's becoming more challenging. But it's a problem we can still manage. You know, we are used to managing risk in our, in our environments. This is just another. Let's get used to that. Let's not give in to the sense of fear, which somewhat has been a feature of the cybersecurity community for a long time. This is not Armageddon. We can deal with it, providing you know, we, we, we face up to it, square in the eyes, recognize that we cannot remove the threat anymore. The best we can do is mitigate its effects and carry out a sensible uh, cybersecurity regime to try and contain the effects and prepare for the day when we are likely to see the storm coming. If we do that, then we can get on with our lives of, of digitizing our business, get on with our lives of making the best of technical innovation. Start with the right culture and mindset. This is uh, a game we can still deal with, we can still win, if we do the right things, the simple things well, and prepare for, for the bad day when it comes.